Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Craig Horn, and it is Food for Thought Friday. So glad that you've joined us today. And just want to share a few nuggets of wisdom that uh, spoke to me while I've been doing reading my Bible, maybe uh, through a book I've read, a podcast I've listened to, maybe in a conversation with somebody else, uh, maybe on social media. Um, but just things that spoke to me that hope maybe it'll help you. And I saw this posted by some man on social media that said, you know, sometimes God puts you in places alone because he needs you to realize you do not need anybody but him. And, you know, friends, maybe that's where you're at. You're in a season of life. You know, I just, you feel like you're alone. I mean, you may be married, but you may be single, widowed, or divorced. Like 40 or 6% of the population in the United States over the age of 18 is either single by choice, uh, divorced, or widowed. So, you know, you may be, quote, physically alone, and yet you don't have to be alone. And I think I shared a couple weeks ago that, you know, I've been in a season one time in my life in a, a season where just a lot was going on and, um, you know, was single and not in a relation, dating relationship or anything, and uh, blessed with great family and friends, but it seemed like family members were just all going through some challenging situations in their life and, uh, the two or three guys that I speak to in my life uh, that uh, I can just share my burdens and heart with. And uh, they will listen, number one. Two, they'll push me to the Lord. Three, sometimes they'll give me truth and love. They were all just really challenging seasons of their life. And I couldn't go to them. And I didn't want to burden them because they're already dealing with other challenges in their life. And I just thought, you know what, Lord, I, I I don't know why, but I just it's you and me, and that's going to have to be enough. And, you know, Jesus knew all about that. And I'm so thankful in one of the gospels he said that he knew that the disciples were going to leave him and everybody else was, uh, even though hundreds, thousands were following him at a time. Eventually, he became, of course, nobody was there. Judas betrayed him, and yet Jesus said, you know, you're going to be leaving me and leaving me alone, but you know what? I'm never alone. My Father is always with me. And somebody today listening, you didn't know that, that your Heavenly Father, He is with you. Jesus is with you. The Counselor, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit is with you. And I can honestly say to you that, man, even though it was, I felt a little bit lonely, I, I just didn't feel alone. Uh, just, I was like, God, you and I, are, we're together. <clears throat> I'm okay. And really, I didn't feel as lonely. Uh, might have been, I probably didn't say that correct earlier uh, I didn't even though I was alone I didn't feel lonely is what I'm trying to say I apologize didn't say that correctly earlier is you know yeah I was physically uh, alone but I wasn't lonely and I also you know mentally emotional alone because I couldn't reach out to family or friends for this season and you know I, I do want to say if it was something just so incredible a crisis I could reach out to any of my family or friends but closest friends but you know the fact of the matter is friends sometimes uh, it's good for us to go through those seasons and realize that when god's all you've got god's all you need and that's why god sent his son jesus so you know uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, sometimes you just walk through seasons where it's just you and god and jesus and the holy spirit and i want to encourage you again uh, to take advantage of that benefit that blessing of being a follower of jesus and uh, the Holy Spirit and talk to that comforter and that counselor and ask him to help you and minister to you and tell him when you're alone. And uh, that third part of the Trinity, I really just don't think that we realize the blessing we can have in the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, I saw this quote in this article about Kerry Newhoff. Uh, if you're in the church leadership, uh, really, really would encourage you to check out his website. But uh, he said, you know, uh, the church acts like it's perfect and talks about all kinds of rules, but it's full of hi hypocrisy. You have to lead the church to have a posture of humility that says, we are all beggars looking for bread, and we're going to help each other get it. We are de so dependent on the grace of God that he's the only way we can wake up in the morning. And Kerry quoted that quote from somebody else, so I apologize when I took the picture of the screen. I did not get that person's name in it. But I love that quote, we are all beggars looking for bread, and we're going to help each other get it. We are so dependent on the grace of God 
that he's the only way we can wake up in the morning. I know a lot of you listen to this in the morning, whether it's the podcast that you listen to while you're getting ready in the morning or while you're fixing breakfast. And just I want to remind you, maybe just having that mindset, you know, Lord, uh, man, I'm just a beggar looking for bread. And uh, God, I need your help. I need your grace. And uh, I just want to invite you to be a part of all that I do today. And uh, I also want to invite you to, you know, just do with my schedule as you please. And I kind of regret I haven't done that more often. And yet I'm trying to grow and be more aware of when sometimes things just don't work out. I mean, I think it's wise to have a plan. The Bible talks about planning, and it's it's very important to have a plan. And if you don't have a plan, um, you know, you just kind of walk around circles. So I think you need to have structure. So please don't misunderstand me. But also there's something powerful when you say, you know, God, I just surrender this day to you and my schedule to you. You know what I feel like I need to get done, but maybe you've got a different plan, something else you want to do. And I want to give you permission to do that, Lord. And yet sometimes we don't really uh, feel like doing that. We don't know if we can do it. And yet, God, I, I think he always honors that. I know he does. And sometimes over the side of heaven, there's just things we won't understand. I get asked that so many times now as a pastor for 20 years. You know, God, I just, or Greg, I just don't understand why God allowed that to happen. And I just have to humbly say to them, you know, this side of heaven, there's a lot of things I don't understand. But Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 are kind of my go-to verses when I'm in one of those seasons of life or somebody else is. For my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts and my ways higher than your thoughts and your ways. And friends, I've just had to lean back to that verse. Uh, I heard my hero Wayne Smith say it when I was in college and was fortunate. I had a really fun time in college. So that verse fortunately did not really apply. did not have any major catastrophes, death and families or anything. But... <laughs> That quickly changed as I uh, got out on my own. And um, just obviously as you get older, uh, just more seasons of life and more experiences. A lot of them good, but some of them extremely painful. And sometimes I would just have to say, okay, God, I don't understand that. But, you know, your word says that your thoughts and your ways are not my thoughts and ways. And as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are your thoughts and your ways. So I've just got to lay this at the foot of the cross, and I've got to give it to you even though I don't really understand why you've allowed this to happen in my life right now. And as the old saying goes, sometimes it's okay to not be okay. Now, that's not the way I like to operate. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a control person. Uh, that, 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 that's healing in itself, just to be able to say that, right? <laughs> I like to control things. And uh, some of you I know are judging me, but I know there's a lot of you that uh, are in the same boat that I am. And sometimes I like to try to control things. But, man, I'm learning sometimes uh, to just let go and let God. And I'm trying a little bit better not to squeeze so tightly and hold on tightly like the old saying about, you know, trying to keep a fistful of sand as you squeeze it. Man, the sand particles, as soft and beautiful as it is, just goes right through your fingers, right? No matter how tight you squeeze it. And sometimes we just have to, you know, just let go and let God. I love this quote I saw by Charles Spurgeon recently. It said, we are in a wrong state of mind if we are not in a thankful state of mind. Love Charles Spurgeon, one of the most famous preachers ever, but I'd never seen this quote by him before until recently on social media. We are in a wrong state of mind if we are not in a thankful state of mind. And friends, I just want to encourage you to be thankful, you know, to be grateful. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And there is always something to be thankful for. One of the things that's been so powerful for me out of the flood is that um, you know, some people that I know because of being the pastor at Jackson Christian Church for four years that, you know, lost everything. And, you know, I was talking with one of them. They just said, you know, it, 
even though I've lost all these things. One of them was my mother's dining room table that had been in the family for a long time, and I wanted to pass on to my daughter when I died, um, you know, just ruined. And uh, she said, you know what, I'm just thankful that I'm alive, uh, thankful I was able to get out in time, and, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be thankful and focus on my blessings and not with, you know, what I don't have. And, of course, she didn't have a whole lot. And she lost everything, but she just was thankful and had that attitude of gratitude. And, you know, if somebody that's just gone and suffered the consequences of this horrific flood that just came through eastern Kentucky and the Jackson area, um, then, you know, we can be thankful. We can be grateful. And I want to remind you today that uh, man would love for you to help us out as we try to um, help give hope to people in Eastern Kentucky, specifically the Jackson area where uh, I am on a regular basis. I uh, hope you'll go to our website, hopeisheretoday.org. That's hopeisheretoday.org. And click on our Donate button. And once you click on Donate again, uh, there'll be an area for special instructions and if you're just making a general contribution, then there's no need to put anything in that. But in this case, if you're making a flood relief donation, uh, please put flood relief in that. And we'll make sure 100% of those financial resources that you entrust Hope is Here with gets in the hands of somebody that has suffered because of this devastating flood. This is a little lighthearted, so I want to try to you know, get ending our program on something a little lighthearted and want you to have a wonderful weekend and Friday, but I'm not sure who wrote this, but it just says, you know, when a flashlight grows dim or quits working, do you just throw it away? Of course not. You change the batteries. When a person messes up or finds themselves in a dark place, do you just cast them aside? Of course not. You help them change their batteries. You know, some need double A, uh, attention and affection. Some need triple A, attention, affection, and acceptance. Some need C, compassion. And some need D, direction. And if they still don't seem to shine, simply sit with them quietly and share your light. Man, I love that. It's so true. You know, it's a lighthearted way of looking about when life gets hard and people mess up and we just got to be, you know, just not cast people aside. And I do want to say we have to be careful now. I mean, sometimes we can get uh, where we're enabling people and I've been guilty of that in my past as a people pleaser and um, I try to be sensitive and generous to others' needs and I've had a couple of situations, you know, recently where I've just had to say, you know, I'm sorry, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm I'm enabling you. I'm not helping you. I'm enabling you, and you've got to take some responsibility, and you and God, and uh, just kind of figure things out this time. I feel like I'm enabling you. But, you know, sometimes we don't have to have the answers. It can be just like when Job lost everything, and uh, some of his closest friends just came and sat with him for several days. Didn't say a word. I mean, your presence means everything. And sometimes we don't know what to say when people go through a tough time, but just say, hey, can I come over for a moment? And uh, I remember Wally Riddell saying the powerful story, and he was a guest on Hope is Here a couple years ago, that when he lost his precious daughter in college, uh, was in a car accident with a college basketball team from Cincinnati Bible College. And one of his good friends just came over and sat in a chair and each night for those first couple weeks, didn't say anything, but was just there, and his presence was such a blessing. So know your presence matters, especially when people are hurting. We're out of time today, but I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you again Monday. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here.